One of the most common file management tasks that you will do on your Linux system is renaming files. And renaming a single file is rather a simple task. Most people know how to do this both at the command line or in your graphical file manager. But what happens when you need to do more advanced file renaming activities? For example, bulk file renaming. Or maybe you want to do some file renaming on search patterns and regular expressions and things like that. Well, today I'm going to show you several methods for doing file renaming. All of these methods I have used in the past. So let me switch over to my desktop and let me go ahead and open a terminal and let me zoom way in here and let me switch to the bash shell because by default my terminals open up in the fish shell and I may do a little bit of simple scripting so it's good for me to go ahead and just switch over to bash. Now I am in my home directory, I can ls my home directory and what I want to do is I want to create a test directory. To play around in. So I'm going to run mkdir space test for make directory test. And now I've made that directory. Let me cd into test. If I do a ls, of course it's an empty directory. Let me clear the screen. So now what I want to do is I want to create a bunch of files that we can play with and do some renaming stuff with. So I could use the touch command and do something like uh, touch space 1.txt, 2.txt, or you know, whatever. But if I'm going to create 10, 100, 1,000 files, that would be tedious. A better way, if I'm going to do consecutive numbers, would be to do something like sequence 10. And it gives me a sequence of numbers, 1 through 10. What I could do is I could just pipe that into XORG. So I'm going to do XORG space dash capital I space the opening and closing curly braces space and then the command to actually create those files which again is the touch command. So I'm going to do touch space and then the opening and closing curly braces dot txt. So that should create 1 through 10 dot txt for us. And let me ls just to verify. Now the most basic renaming of a file is renaming a single file and typically what most people would do is they would use the move command mv. So you could do mv for move space the file you want to move. So in this case I'll move 1.txt. So I'm going to move it to a file that doesn't exist. Just give it a name that doesn't actually exist like 11.txt and what it does it moves 1.txt to 11.txt. It essentially renames it if I do an ls you see. 1 txt is not there, 11 txt is now there. Now what I just showed you there with the move command, that works when you're moving a single file. So you could move and then the source file, space, and the destination. Uh, so the, the new name essentially is the way that command typically works. But what if you have a whole bunch of files that you want to move? For example, maybe you had you know three files that you wanted to move. Well, in that case, the very last argument doesn't need to be a file name. You need to actually give a directory to move those. So assume I had a subdirectory in this directory called best. That's how you would end that command if you were moving multiple files. Now I assume most people probably know about the move command. It's a really simple command, but where things get interesting is when you use move in other tools. For example, I could use the move command in a for loop. And that's what I think I want to do. I think I want to use uh, bulk renaming using a for loop. So well, the way a for loop works in Bash is you do for and then a variable. It could be anything. I'm just going to use x. Just pick a character. I'm going to do for x in and then I'm going to do asterisk.txt. So for every file in this directory that ends in .txt and then semicolon and then do space and then whatever command you want to run on each of those files and then semicolon done. That's uh, the basic format of a for loop. So let me just take this example and replace command with an actual command. Let's do mv move and then I'm going to do space dash dash. Now the dash dash works for move. It actually works for most bash commands. Dash dash signifies that hey everything after this is not a flag or an option because some of our file names that we're moving they could include dashes. They could include things that the move command might interpret as flags or options. So by giving it the dash dash we're letting it know hey everything that follows is not a flag or option. And then what are we moving? Well I think we should move x right. So we uh, assigned x as the variable so we're going to move x. 
And then I'm going to do double quotes and then dollar sign and then opening and closing curly braces here. And inside the braces, I'm going to go ahead and do X parentheses dot TXT. And what I want to do is I want to rename all the files that end in dot TXT to dot TEXT. So let me do done. And if I do an LS, you see that is exactly what happened. Now that is just one method of doing this. The for loop I think is the simplest method. A lot of people like using the find command because the find command is a basic GNU utility and it allows you to pass on the results of the find command and execute that as an argument in another command. For example, let me do find in this directory and I'm gonna do dash name. So we're gonna find by name and we're gonna find asterisk.text because that's what all the files are ending in now. And I'm going to do space exec space sh for shell dash c and then we're going to pass along the following command. So we're going to do a x equals and then let's do the uh, braces again. The braces are going to need to be double quoted and then a semicolon and then move space dash dash space. You know a lot of this actually it's just basically the for loop right it's very similar it's just a different method uh, again the find command that we're doing right now and the uh, for loop method very similar except this time we're going to rename dot text back to dot txt then the ending double quote the ending single quote for that whole command and then finally we need to do the backslash and then the semicolon and if we formatted that correctly and I did a ls, you see we actually renamed everything back to .txt again by using the move command in conjunction with the find command. Now the find command here, it looks a little more convoluted. I think most people can grasp exactly what the for loop was doing. What this is doing, it's finding a pattern. That's essentially the find command right there. Find in this directory everything with the name anything that ends in .txt. And then the rest of it is execute the shell command, right? And then everything in these single quotes here, that is the shell command to actually execute. Now let me clear the screen. Uh, some other methods for doing some bulk renaming would be to actually use the rename command. Now there are two very common commands, rename commands on Linux. So you need to make sure which rename command your Linux distribution uses because the one here on Arch, if I do a man rename, is rename1 and this is a simpler rename tool. The more common one that's available on most Linux distributions is one that's actually written in Perl on Arch. It's actually called Perl-rename. You have to install that particular program. Rename is usually installed by default, but Perl uh, rename, I forgot to add the man to it, Let's do the man on the, see it's really just rename is also the name of that command, but on Arch you, get, you actually have to type Perl dash rename. And this is a lot more powerful of a tool than the other rename tool, a lot more flags and options, and it allows you to do some uh, Perl expressions. For example, you can do some substitutions and some translations. Let me quit out of that. So let me show you this simple rename tool, the one that was here by default, the one that's not the Perl rename. The way this works is you do rename and then some pattern and then the change you want to make happen and then uh, the name of the file for example dot uh, txt for example asterisk dot txt right is how that would work so in this case what i'll do is the pattern we want to search for is actually txt because that's the only pattern i think that's in all the files and we want to change that to capital txt and if this works correctly, and let me ls, you see we just changed all the files to dot capital txt. Now for those of you that are using a distribution that uses the Perl rename tool, uh, how that would work is you would do just the word rename. I've got to type Perl dash rename, but on most distributions it'll just be rename. And then how this would work is, you know, it's going to look like a lot of the standard like 
said substitution commands and you know your vim substitutions and things you'll do single quotes s for substitution slash and then the pattern to search for i'm going to do capital txt slash and then what we want to change it to lowercase txt and then the ending slash and then we need to tell it uh, what files to do this on once again i'll do asterisk dot capital txt and then if I do an ls, you see we changed everything back. Now, let me remove everything in this directory. So I'm going to do a backslash rm because I have remove a list to always ask me for confirmation. I don't want to do the confirmation. So I'm going to do a rm and I'm going to do an asterisk for everything in this directory. ls, it's now an empty directory. And then I'm going to do uh, that sequence command that I did earlier. So this time, instead of creating 1 through 10.txt, I'm going to add a word before that. We'll do foo 1 through 10.txt. If I do an ls, so now if I up arrow back to the Perl rename, and once again, we'll match .txt. But now let's change the patterns. Obviously, if you wanted to change foo to bar, you know, you could do that. And if you wanted to, instead of a uh, substitution you could actually do a translation so instead of s do y and what a translation is it finds every instance of that character and changes it for example if I wanted to change every a and x to capital a capital X and do an ls you see the A in bar is now capitalized. The X in TXT is now capitalized. And you could get even more creative here. What you could do is, you know, I could give it a range. For example, I could tell it to translate every lowercase a through z and translate that to capital A through z. And if I do an LS, we just capitalized everything in those names. And of course, getting back to the lowercase version is rather simple. In this case, we'll just reverse the pattern, capital A through Z, and then lowercase a through Z. And we might need to make sure that it's searching for everything that ends in capital TXT. And now everything is back to right. So those were several command line ways of doing some renaming of files. Now some other things that you could do is you could actually use a, a terminal file manager that allows you to do bulk renaming. For example, I like VIFM. So this is a file manager that allows bulk renaming. So for example, I'm in the test directory here. What I could do is simple file manager, but it takes Vim commands. So if I did uh, shift V for visual mode, I'm in visual mode. Now I just go and select all the files. So I'm going to select all 10 of those files. And if I hit C for change, you know, standard Vim command, then it's going to ask me what to do next. Do I want to change file permissions? If so, hit P or do I want to rename the files? If so, hit W. So I'll do W. And now I am in a Vim buffer. And what I could do is I could do Control V to get into visual character mode. And I could just select bar and then hit C. And I can name that back to foo. Hit escape. Hit write. Hit colon Q to quit. And I've bulk renamed all of those inside the VIFM file manager. Let me Q to quit out of. VIFM. Another thing I could do is I could actually do all of this in Emacs. For example, I could, let me get into the test directory here in Dear Ed, which is the file manager inside Emacs. So inside Dear Ed, what I could do is I could do a Shift V to get into visual line mode because I'm using evil mode here in Dear Ed. And then once I select all the files that I want to move, for example, uh, I could do M to mark the files. So what Dear Ed does when you type M, it marks a file for you to run a command on it later. For example, capital R, shift R, is rename. That's essentially like doing a bulk MV. It's going to ask me, hey, these 10 files that you marked, where do you want to move them to? And then you just uh, pick a new directory to move those 10 files. Now I'm going to decline that. I'm not going to move those. Let me uh, unmark these files. Let me get to the top here and just do you 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 so that is a unmark command and of course if I wanted to you know I could select blocks of text here inside dear ed for example I could select all the foo here and if I wanted to uh, C for change and then once again I'll type bar hit escape and I've changed all of those inside this dear ed buffer inside Emacs 
So those are just several different ways that you can rename files on Linux. I've used all of these in the past. And of course, I was only manipulating 10 files in this case. And what happens when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands? That's where these tools really come in handy because you don't want to individually have to rename 100 different files or 1,000 different files. And that's where throwing something in a for loop really comes in handy or if it's a simple edit like everything's named with the same pattern then doing it inside an emacs buffer or a vim buffer really makes sense now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode devin gabe james matt michael mitchell paul scott west alan armor dragon chuck commander angry diokai dylan george lee linux ninja maxim mike Jan, alexander peace Arjun fedor polytech red prophet steven and willie these guys they're my highest tier patrons over on patreon without these guys this quick tutorial Tutorial on some bulk renaming tools on Linux, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work and you want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, command line utilities, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Emacs. The answer is always Emacs.